Hello everybody and welcome to this briefing. In this video we will speak about landing performance and contaminated runways. Since the introduction of the Talpa Arc model for the computation of in-flight landing distances, the flight crew is now responsible for the assessment of the runway condition codes based on reported contaminants. For this reason, Airbus has included the runway condition assessment matrix concept in the documentation. The runway condition code information is now part of the SNOTAM and the DATIS as a result of the global reporting format methodology defined by ICAO. This information is now under the responsibility of the airport and is a direct input of the landing performance computation. Therefore, the use of the aircam is no longer standard. This video introduces the concept of runway condition code reporting and provides some recommendations about the use of runway condition code in operation and how the flight crew participates in the reporting. During the descent preparation phase, the flight crew may need to compute the in-flight performance in accordance with the standard operating procedures. In the past, before global reporting format application, the entry point for runway state assessment was a contaminant and a reported depth. Let us take an example of a runway state group in a META. Here is the code 5 of the published META runway state corresponds to wet snow and the code 15 corresponds to a thickness of 15 mm. When there was no information about the runway condition code, the use of the aircam was necessary to define the runway condition code for the computation of the in-flight landing distance. Here, 15 mm of wet snow corresponds to a runway condition code 3. The runway condition code obtained with the aircam must be inserted as an input of the performance application of the electronic flight bag. Today, with the introduction of the GRF, the runway condition code is provided in the SNOTAM or the DATIS. In this DATIS example, the runway condition code is free. This input can be directly used in FlySmart Plus without going through the aircam. However, the aircam remains in the FCOM for reference or for example if degradation is anticipated or for maximum recommended crosswind. Now that we have shared some information about runway condition codes, let us take a deeper look at it. A runway condition code includes the contaminant information and observations of the braking level. It is provided by the airport and is based on several observations and measurements. Therefore, it is not only a measurement of the friction coefficient or a direct relationship with a contaminant that is reported, but it is the entire set of indications that demonstrates the real aircraft braking performance on the runway. The global reporting format provides the airport with the possibility of upgrading or downgrading the runway condition code based on observation. Let us take a deeper look at one example. Let us take a look at a DATIS example. Ice is reported on the runway. This runway contaminant end state is identified as a runway condition code 1 on the aircam. However, in this case, based on all available information and observations, the airport decided to upgrade the runway condition code to 3 that corresponds to medium braking performance. The aim of this upgrade is to indicate the real braking performance on the runway. In this case, we can make the assumption that the airport personnel has performed a sound treatment on the runway that will significantly improve braking performance. The crew will therefore take advantage of this information and compute the landing performance using the runway condition code published by the airport. Free in this example. Keep in mind 
that it is also possible for the crew to perform a new assessment on the runway condition code based on their own observations. For example, when the temperature is close to dew point, if it has started to snow or rain and the available information no longer appears to be up to date. However, while the airport can upgrade or downgrade the runway condition code, the crew can only downgrade the runway condition code. The runway contaminants, the depth, and the runway condition code are provided for each runway third. In some cases, it may appear that a different runway condition code is reported for each runway third. In this example, a runway condition code 5 is provided for the first runway third, a runway condition code 4 is reported for the second third, and a runway condition code 3 is reported for the last segments. However, the EFB tools have the capability of performing the computation of the in-flight landing distance based on a single runway condition code. In this case, the most simple and safe way to perform the computation is to use the lowest runway condition code. In our example, this means a runway condition code 3. Nevertheless, using the lowest runway condition code may not be advantageous. In the case where the lowest runway condition code is reported for the last third, it is possible to perform another computation with the second lowest runway condition code. This corresponds to a runway condition code 4 in our example. If the computation indicates that the factored landing distance ends before the last runway third, then the runway condition code reported in the last portion may be disregarded. Of course, this will be advantageous only when the last third of the runway is significantly degraded when compared to the first two thirds. When the runway condition code is provided in the DATIS or SNOTAM, the crew may refer to the FCOM limitations chapter in order to obtain the maximum crosswind component for takeoff and landing. If the runway condition code is different for each runway third, the most conservative maximum crosswind component must be considered. In the case of upgrade or downgrade of the runway condition code from the airport, it is the runway condition code provided in the DATIS that must be used to determine crosswind limitations. If the flight crew degrades the runway condition code, the degraded runway condition code from the flight crew will be used for the crosswind limitation. The local authorities may request to consider dispatch on a contaminated runway. In this case, the EFB computation can be performed based on a reporting contaminant. In fact, the primary objective of the global reporting format is to enhance the awareness of the crew during the computation of the in-flight landing distance using the runway condition code. It provides more accurate and up-to-date information regarding the braking performance at the time of descent preparation. At the time of dispatch, there is no detailed information that could be foreseen for the runway condition code. Therefore, only the predicted contaminant is used based on the weather forecast and on the knowledge of the airport's standard methods to clean a contaminated runway. Runway condition codes are reported by the ATC or by the airport via DATIS or SNOTAM. They are primarily based on measurements and observations by the airport personnel. However, the GRF also includes requirements for the crew to monitor the perceived braking efficiency versus the reported runway condition code. In the case of difference, the airport must be informed in order to revise the published runway condition code. Some regulators may publish guidance materials regarding pilot perception of the braking level. AC 700-060 from Transport Canada is a good reference on this subject. At a good braking level, the friction coefficient is high enough to be torque limited. This means that the deceleration will increase with the torque up to its maximum that corresponds to maximum braking pedal. 
at a poor braking level, the friction coefficient is low. So the anti-skid system activates and reduces the brake pressure, therefore increasing the pedal deflection as a limited effect on the deceleration. Of course, the monitoring can be performed automatically with the help of the braking action computation function. Airbus 271, the measured braking action after landing was good to medium. Despite the standardization required by ICAO, SNOTAM and ATIS messages are under the responsibility of each government around the world. Therefore, some countries may have specific information reporting in the messages. Airbus recommends that operators check the reporting format of each country in order to identify these specific features. The global reporting format results in several improvements for the computation of the in-flight landing distance also referred to as LDTA. It permits a global standard for all operators around the world. It makes the current DATIS and SNOTAM easier to understand and provides a better method of assessment and reporting of runway conditions. As a result, the same information is provided in RCR, SNOTAM, ATIS and there is a better situational awareness for the pilots. The information provided in the SNOTAM is also available for the flight crew at the time of takeoff, but this would be another topic and maybe another win video. We hope that you enjoyed this briefing and see you soon for the next one.